Good, Good morning, morning from South Queensferry. Look at that view. That's true. So pretty. So many bridges right behind us. Yeah. Now this is going to be our gateway to Edinburgh today. Yes. So we're just going to jump off. Now we've heard there's a few ways you can get to town. Yeah. Um, they broke it down yesterday. You can take a taxi. Mm -hmm. You can take the train, right. which it's like the train station is really close to the port. I think it's a 45 minute train ride. And apparently there is a shuttle bus. Now we don't know the cost on the bus. We'll go see. Um, but we'll do some learning yeah. and some stuff so we can tell you about it. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to start with breakfast. But yep. The plan is to just wander into town today, hit a few hot spots that have been recommended to us, take a tour of a castle, a lot of fun that. stuff like that. Yeah, so. Come join us and see what it's all about. But breakfast first. <laughs> Always. Come on. <laughs> I think there are three bridges right over there. I know we saw them from the other side the other day. This closest one to us, the red one, is a rail bridge. And then there's an older car bridge and then a newer car bridge, which was called the Fourth Bridge, I guess, F-O-R-T-H. Because it's funny, there's only three of them and one's called the Fourth Bridge, but it's not spelled like the number four. Oh, so anyway. Made on the ah, bridge. yep, or Made of the Fourth, oh, yeah. Sorry. A little, little ferry boat there. Well, breakfast is calling, so we're gonna answer. Let's go. Bye. Six thirty. Last tender. Well, I haven't seen them stick the signs there for the gangways before. Deck five Plaza. You know what time it is. You at the cafe, baby? You gonna dine? We're noticing certain things are missing. They do not have the muffin sandwich like they normally do. We're missing the mushroom frittatas. Bananas seem to be out of stock. It is. It's coming to the end. <laughs> Breakfast success. And apparently they did have bananas. They were just restocking. <laughs> well, something I might not have talked about in a while, but bears repeating, is how we figure out how we're going to get from place to place. So looking at the South Queensbury Marina over to Edinburgh Castle, just using um, Google Maps, really, or Apple Maps. Um, it would be a 38 minute drive, but you know, we don't have a car. We could walk it in three hours and 48 minutes, but I'm gonna say no to that. One of my favorite things is the transit section. So this shows all the options of like a bus, what bus you would take, and it would take you 56 minutes. Of course, it's a 16 minute walk to the bus station. Uh, the train station is actually not as close as I thought. The Dalmany train station is a 27 minute walk and then it would be a one hour train ride. So the shuttle bus option is looking better and better. We'll just have to check it out when we get out there. But yeah, you can see it's a little bit of a haul to get to Dalmany and then it would just be three stops maybe over toward uh, Edinburgh Central. These, the, the coffee shop folks are applauding my ability to get from place to place. They're, they're the most friendly people and they know your order too. Yeah, they're really, good. they're really proud that I figured out how to get around <laughs> in town. You're welcome guys. I've got it all figured out for us. I guess the only saving grace would be maybe if the tender dropped us off at Hawes Pier. I'm not quite sure. That's actually pretty close to the train station. But yeah, to walk the distance over to where I think the tenders are going to drop us. Holy moly, right over here in that looking structure. We'll see where we end up because we've never been here before. <laughs> Let's go down. Captain's talking about picking up tender tickets. Welcome to deck four. Time to head ashore. Yandy has done volunteer to sit on top of the lifeboat, sacrificing her warmth to get all these views. Y'all, we're rubbing against the boat hard right now. <laughs> the, the ship, I should say. Wow. Oh. Well, we will definitely get some good bridgey views and birdie views and all kinds of stuff from up here. Well, it'll be an adventure nonetheless. There's a the little staircase we had to climb up to get up here. Ooh. And we're off. <laughs> ah. That's awesome. Goodbye, ship. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> make our way around because I know our destination is over there past the rail bridge. Oh there we go now we can see a little bit more of the bridges and our destination over there on the left. Sea lions buddy. That's cool. He was too fast for us to get any pictures or anything but keep your eyes peeled. Well, there's tons of those. That's fine. We don't need those. Get ready to make the pass under the bridge. Yeah, this is a rail bridge now. And I hear the red hot chili peppers live here under the bridge. Wow, kind of backlit, but you know, it's cool. 
looks like they are docking us at Hawes, so that does open up the option of the train. The train looks to be about five pounds ten round trip per person. Hmm, decisions, decisions. My hair flying out of the <laughs> Your hair is out of the bridges okay, shot for now. Like, we'll see if it stays that way. So now we're going to go inquire about this shuttle bus and see how much it is. I see a sign that says shuttle buses to city center left. Whoops, that must be them. Okay, so taxi from 24 pounds. All right, we're trying to glean all the information we can here to make an educated decision. So Dalmany Station says 600 meters upstairs. Oh, that's true. You do have to climb up to the level of the rail track, I guess, to hit the train station. So the folks here in the yellow vests are the ones to investigate with. <laughs> well, actually, they said if you just want the shuttle bus, you can go right to the bus. If you want to do hop on, hop off, you talk to the folks in the vest. I haven't figured out a price yet, but I think we're just going to go ahead and commit to this bus now that we're here. Path of least resistance, yeah? Oh, she wants to go upstairs. So it looks like 12 pounds per person round trip. So that's, that's not bad. And they do take credit cards and contactless payment. Well, it should be about a half hour ride or so into town and we can study our map that we picked up on the way there. Welcome to Edinburgh. We've been dropped at the South St. David Street Station. So buses run every 20 minutes until 5. I think we should be able to find it. Just um, look for that. That'll be our landmark. We are going to cut back down this street that we just drove up on the bus because we found a store <laughs> that Dee has been itching to go into. I've always wanted to go to Primark and there's one really close by so we're going to go check it out. Yep, we saw Primark Edinburgh on the way in. We're seeing all these names we've heard of, Marks and Spencer, oh, cool architecture everywhere. We're getting some sneak peeks of our eventual destination for the day. There's the castle way up on the hill. Wow. There it is, right here next to Sassenach. We've got Primark Edinburgh. I don't know how much I'll vlog in Primark, but anyway. It looks like it's about five levels of clothing and accessories and whatnots. Disney stuff, bowls, Lakers, what in the world? They have a whole section of my hats, plain black, no embellishment, yes! Oh, I am in fashion, okay. Back out into the cool world. It's kind of warm in there. <laughs> well, let's hop in Marks and Spencer, actually. Let's get to the historic stuff. Wahoo. So there is a lot of vertical to this walk is what I'm gathering since the castle is on the hill. Is he singing? Yeah, I hear some songing. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, that'll take us by the National Gallery. We'll climb the mound as it's called on the Google. Uh, we'll cross over Market Street. I don't think I even said what we're doing today. We've uh, gone on free tours by foot, one of our favorite websites, and signed up for a pay walking tour inside Edinburgh Castle. It includes a skip the line admission ticket. And so we're going to the meeting spot now. See, you'd think, oh, we want to be walking toward the castle. Well, part of our guided tour will be doing the walk to the castle. So our meeting spot is up here on High Street. Ooh, we can get some peeks down on where we came from down there. Welcome to High Street and the Royal Mile. So our meeting spot is here just across from St. Giles Cathedral. Can't miss that. There is the official meeting location here, I guess. Advocates Close, is that how you say that? Next to Cigar Box and this gift shop. <laughs> oh, that's a cool looking uh, like a little alleyway there. There we go, they said look for the black umbrellas with the yellow logos. Follow this umbrella, we're gonna go up this way and I'll introduce myself over there, okay? okay. Follow me this way, please. All right, so our guide is Adam. They've got us in a group of about 30 
and we're ready to wander. I'm not sure how much actual tour narration we'll pick up today, but I'll try to repeat the highlights. You know how it is. Well, one good thing is the group filled up early. We've actually gotten a 15 minute jump start. So it's noon now. We're trying to make it to the castle for a 1 p.m. gun firing. Oh, I hear some bells, clock towers going off for the noon time. Well, he said it was about to get busy in this section and get our shoulders ready. He wasn't joking. Got to do some bump bumps. I know this is my fist, not my shoulder, but it works better. Uh -uh, uh -uh. We have to talk about the history of the castle, okay? So we're going to go way, way back. 320 million years ago. We are more northerly now than any major Canadian city. We live far up north. And as a result, instead of the lovely tropics, we reach the north into an ice age. We're creeping up a little closer to the castle now to get some more intel. Looks like they're installing some kind of seating here around the castle. I'm not up on my current events to know what's going on. There she is. This is a temporary stadium. See, for one month during the year, first of all, the fringe, the international festival happens. But more importantly, the military tattoo takes place right where we are standing today. We've learned all about William Wallace and Robert the Bruce who are decorating the sides of this gate. And there they are. We also learned that the crest above the door apparently inspired the Lannister's crest from Game of Thrones, just with inverted colors. I got like some wooden doors in here. Uh, this is the portcullis gate. Oh my gosh, they've got the uh, the thing that comes down. Look at these doors. Is that thing actually called a portcullis? I don't know if I remember that correctly. At one o'clock precisely, as the time ball drops, the cannon fires a shot. So I cannot let you go and have a quick look and maybe come back in two minutes. Yeah? Don't go and have a view. Don't, guys. Oh, uh, don't do it. It's funny, apparently the castle is very particular about where tour guides are allowed to go and aren't allowed to go. He can't take us over here to the view, but that doesn't mean we can't break away from the group and come take a look at the view. Okay, yeah, this was worth not doing. <laughs> wow. So we did not come over here and take these videos and pictures. We didn't do it. All right, let's get back over here. Fun fact, we learned that the roads are like this because uh, when it used to freeze, this was the center of the roadway and this is what the horses would use to get traction while pulling the carts around. We're learning stuff. I was here the whole time. <laughs> yeah. We also learned that the cannons up on the wall are naval cannons. They are not supposed to be here. This place had no guns, but when Queen Victoria visited, she said a castle has to have guns. Very particular about what she wanted here. So a lot of things don't belong, but are cool to look at, right? Yeah, so she made them build that gate in the front because the castle had to have a gate. Go get these guns off of a ship because the castle had to have guns. They don't belong here. They're not even the right kind of gun for this castle. Funny. Anyway, let's keep learning. Yeah. <laughs> We're going back downhill now. It's funny how many uphills and downhills are here even just inside the castle navigating. It's all flat and smooth, but it's a lot of ups and downs. So one of the most important integral parts of the castle's history is the hospital. Hospital Square. So to be built in this castle was the hospital in 1897 over here. The Highlands oh, there's also the National War Museum over here, if you're interested in machinery and thingy things. Queen Elizabeth I passed away without an heir to her throne, and James VI replaced her. The Jacobites tried to storm Edinburgh Castle. They arrived at Edinburgh Castle's walls, found out that their ladders were too short, and so they didn't end it that way. The 745 is a bit more important. Right, time to head up for the one o'clock gun. Looks like you kind of just gather around anywhere. Looks like all the excitement is focused around this clock area. We just saw somebody come out and load something. So I guess this is digitally connected. So it should be at exactly one o'clock. Whoa, got me. Good gracious. That was precisely down to the second and it still scared the mess out of me. Okay. All right, we're making our way up the last hill to one of the highest points in the castle. So through Fugue's Gate. 
Well, we found the wind up here as well. <laughs> Just to stand in this spot over here. This is one of my favorite parts. Again, you have great views of the Pentland Hills over there. And of course, you have some of the most important buildings. Thanks that to is the Walters. oldest building it's in the city. William Wallace defies the English. He defeats the English at a battle and proves to all it is possible. We can fight the English, we can defeat them, and then he loses every single battle to come. Now we get a squeeze through here. Crown Square, I think he said. Oh, there's a really long line for something over there. Oh, they have crown jewels here, don't they? We've reached the very top. Now this is the final space. David's Tower once stood over there. At the end of this tour, I urge you again to go down there because that's where you'll find the foundations to the tower. Exactly, who cares? That's where the toilets are as well. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell took over this castle and when he did, he ripped this entire building to pieces. This is the National War Memorial. And it's here because this castle is still a military installation. Inside this palace, there's a room. And inside that room, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most disappointing sights you'll ever see. As you go in, the most valuable artifact in Scottish history is a lump of rock. It's called the Stone of Destiny. <laughs> My favorite thing is just go inside that room and just watch as everybody goes, ooh, ah, wow, what? Well, the tour has ended, but we are free to roam the castle as we please. What is our first thought? Eh, go ahead and queue up here to see the Stone of Destiny, because apparently it's getting ready to move to a dedicated museum. This is the last chance to see it in Edinburgh Castle. And maybe some jewels and scepters and stuff like that. Oh, if I see the rules just inside the door. No phones, no cameras, no videos, no photos. So this is the Royal Palace. We'll just come in here and see it with our own eye holes. We will tell you about it later. Oh, there's a little information about the Stone of Destiny, so we can grab that. Ooh. That was awesome. All right, now we're continuing in here where apparently videos and photos are all right. The Royal Line of Mary, Queen of Scots. Oh, you're very bright. There we go. Thank you, camera. <laughs> well, what do we have now? Oh, dear. Wow, the crest above the fireplace. Look at the ceiling, though. That is ornate. Coming out now into um, another big room. Wow. This is where I hang out. This is where I have my parties in here. Yo, it gets lit in here when I have parties. Whoop, whoop. Look at the disco lighting effect. I had that installed recently. Well, up and out. So, free roaming time. Yeah. I know he said uh, you get a free whiskey each just for being here. So you get a free whiskey sample. I'm down to that. <laughs> yeah, please do not drone near the toilets. Okay, that's one of the rules. So this is the David's Tower area. Well, St. Margaret's Chapel is definitely worth a look, being that it is the oldest thing here. Well, we got distracted by views. Let's see if I can block the wind, because it is windy up here. Wow. Ooh, this is one of those that was built before people were tall. It's probably gonna be kind of crowded in here. Let's see what we see. Well, the stained glass windows are not original. But they're pretty. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, it's kind of expensive, I'm sure. St. Margaret's, oh, you look at the reflection of the stained glass. St. Margaret's Gospel Book. Do a quick peek up here. I like the ambiance. That is really about it, but that's fascinating. Ooh, watch the cobbles. Cobbles make me wobble. Well, we've got a couple more things we want to see, so I think we're going to go down the long stairs. And that is a way out, yeah. Guys, we got to the bottom of these dang lang stairs and realized the free whiskey samples were upstairs. So there ain't no free whiskey happening today, but I think we might still get some whiskey in our lives. It just won't be free. Whoops. Oh, audio guides for £3.50. Nice. Back out through the portcullis gate. Telephones and toilets. Let's hit a toilet before we go back out into the streets. Yeah. Guidebooks in a multitude of languages here by the bathrooms. Nice. Down we go. Welcome back to the Royal Mile. 
We're actually going to avoid some of the craziness and peopleness of Royal Mile and jump up sort of a street over. Look how pretty and uncrowded oh. of a street we found. My ah, <laughs> yeah, Royal Mile was cool, but it was crazy. Very. Guys, we're on a mission of exploration. Not sketchy at all. Oh, we've ended up above our destination. So this is an area I think that is supposedly sort of an inspiration for Diagon Alley. I can see that. We're trying to get our Harry Potter connections here. <laughs> Yes, this is Victoria Street down there. Fish and chips, Irish pubs, whoa. It was a steep climb up the Royal Mount. Yeah, yeah, it was. No. <laughs> no it actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, we've made it down to street level. How about that? Hey, we found our way to the cathedral again. <laughs> we found our destination. Okay, no, that's not our destination. Well, we've turned off the Royal Mile onto South Bridge. The Scotland shop. Ooh. Please, can I have some Harry Koo slippers? <laughs> oh, yeah, you can if you wow. Can is this Loch Ness? I don't know what that is. Probably. Oh, we are so close to our destination, but apparently I am not comprehending how vertical this city is. There are streets upon streets upon streets, and Google Maps is not really understanding it either. Right over here, well, there's a bus. But behind the bus and down a street and around the corner is Bannerman's, which is a rock and roll whiskey bar that we were hoping to check out. I don't know how to get there from here, so I think we're going to have to pass right now. Out. Yeah, like we'll learn one of these days how verticalness works. Missed it by that much. Guys, how close were we? Tell me, did we almost do it? Were we tantalizingly close and we could have could have pulled it off? Yeah, it's funny. The map app literally told us we could walk through that gate and jump down and find it like it was a straight line. Huh. Oh man, yeah, okay. We have to get down there. See, Google just told us keep walking straight through this wall. Y'all, don't trust Google. That's what we're learning. Google's but no, fine. we have to get, there's some steps up here and we have to get down in the vicinity of that train station because our meeting spot, see there's that giant thing we saw this morning if we're heading back to the main drag over there. Well, yeah. let's find some down steps. Even better than a stairway to heaven, it's a stairway to Market Street. Oh, they are pretty. The Scotsman Steps, 104 steps made of different marbles by the artist Martin Creed. Guys, we found cool stuff. Oh, well, let's go down 104 awesome, beautiful steps. Down is it? The Scotsman Steps. Yeah, good thing it's not raining. Yeah. As Dee pointed out, <laughs> marble gets real slippery. It's self flooring, I know. It's yeah. Slippery. Look at this craggy little step there. That's cool. All right. And we're out. What is this? We're drawn in by the word Prosecco bar. Oh, a different place has all sorts of Scottish words. Okay, this is, this is, huh. Well, we've stumbled across the Doric, which claims to be, oh yeah, let's look at that first. <laughs> Edinburgh's oldest gastropub since 1823. And again, I'm seeing words like haggis and local things on the menu. Looks like the lunch menu does have some words that I like. Ah, point of clarification. This is the bar menu, and you can go upstairs to get the big menu that we saw outside. But this looks lovely to me. We're gonna put in our food order at the bar. We got a couple of pints of their cider. Same cider we had in London, actually. The Aspal cider, if I'm saying that correctly. Cute. Well, we'll just hang out in here for a little while. So we're having a pint in a pub. And I may or may not have ordered haggis. I feel very I Scottish like right now. I did get shepherd's pie though. Mm -hmm. so we'll I might try it. I don't I know. Dish of it, oh, yeah. I don't know if I do either, but I'm gonna try it. I, did, I ordered it in a very tame way. Yeah. You'll, you'll see. see. It's yeah. Anyway, enjoying for now. We're yeah. glad to have found somewhere with food that we understand how to get there. More traditional food, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do some more research on that. Cities with vertical alatiness. I mean, we weren't expecting it. Whoops. Honestly. So now you know, don't make the same mistake. I know, y'all. <laughs> somehow research ahead of time. I don't know how. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, they're playing, I believe, in a thing called Love by Darkness on the radio. Beautiful, beautiful thing. They've got toilets right here by us in case we need them. 
Also a beautiful, beautiful thing. The food has arrived. Dee has gone with a shepherd's pie. It's pretty big, actually. I got what they call the Doric fries, which is haggis and gravy on fries, or you know, chips as they were. I guess they call them Doric chips now that I think about it. So look at all that. Ooh, steamed it up. I guess that's my gravy over here in the little bucket. Mm, it's kind of like haggis poutine. All right, we're gonna dig in. <laughs> All right, I feel like the first order of business should be trying the haggis without any gravy or without any fries. That's the way to do it, right? It doesn't have a lot of flavor to start off with. It's very, um, what's in haggis? Okay, I know, I know mainly what's in haggis. <laughs> is there a grain in there as well? Like, do they put, it is oats. Okay, I'm mostly getting oats. A little bit of meaty flavor. That is not bad at all. Now, I'm sure, you know, if I had an actual hunk of hunk of haggis here, it might be a different story. All right, this is the way to eat haggis. All right, D and the haggis. Good? Yeah. It's really not bad at all. Really good flavor. Nothing weird about it at all. No. I don't know traditionally how you eat it, but it's good. It even has like, some good pepper. Yeah, How's your shepherd's pie doing? It's amazing. It's very smoky though. It's very hot. <laughs> really good though. Y'all, just look at it. Are you looking? You just have to look at it. Oh, that was fantastic. All right, back oh, out good. into the street. I needed that. I'm recharged. So a quick jaunt across Waverly Bridge and we should be back to where we belong. Oh, there's the train station if we had ridden the railway over. Oh, I hear some tunes up here. It's Jerry Lee Lewis. Great balls of fire. I don't know what that was, but it was fun. Well, Hall's Pier, that looks like us. All aboard. I think we're a tour of the foliage. <laughs> Whee! Well, we got pipe tunes. We've joined the line. We're getting somewhere. Please do not drive your cars into the deep water. It speeds more than four knots. Good to know. Looks like they had water, face towels, and warm beverages. There was a pitcher there that looked kind of like a coffee pot or a cocoa pot. Looks like they're using some local vessels also as tenders now. Made of the fourth. We saw this earlier. Well, we'll just settle in up here. And we're back. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, it is dinner time. Yes. So we came back to the ship, got all cleaned up, and ready for an evening of something. <laughs> Food and fun. That's true. So how was your day in Edinburgh? It was great. So really enjoyed, was it free tours? By, yeah. By foot? But it wasn't free because it included your admission into the castle. Um, which was awesome. But Adam, our tour guide, is mm. one of my favorites we've ever had. He was so animated. It was kind of like the Cliff's Notes version of like a bunch of history, but I didn't mind that because he got to all the nitty gritty really quickly. He was funny. He had really good facial expressions. 
and he didn't even have a microphone, but could, you could still hear him because he would pull us off to make sure we could all hear. And he got us there for the one o'clock gun, which oh, was yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. Love that tour. Otherwise, well, we <laughs> just be warned that it's what everybody wants to do, like the Royal Mile. So oh there's a gosh. lot of people. So pack your patience and just stop, pull over, take your pictures. But it can be a little overwhelming, mm. at least for today. It was a lot. Of it people. was Saturday today. Yeah. I don't know if it was any special Saturday, but it was a busy <laughs> Saturday. We're usually really good with crowds, but that was a lot of people. But yeah. it was still beautiful, and I recommend doing it. Yeah. yeah. And we also learned how vertical of a city yes. it can be. I was not aware uh, that streets would be on top of streets and over streets and under streets. Y'all, yeah. we did a lot of learning today. So we didn't get to some of the places we wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. Something for next time, in. right? That's true. But we found some food. I ate some haggis and I was happy. Yeah, haggis is actually quite good. At least that preparation. Yeah. So now, dinner time. Yep. And that's all. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>to the cabin to find our paper for tomorrow and a time change notice because we're losing an hour. Good night. night. It is bad time. Ready for it because um, we have to change time. Oh shoot. Yeah. Yes. An hour <laughs> like ahead tonight. 11 something now mm -hmm. technically. Losing an hour to match yeah. France time for day after tomorrow. Good news is it's a sea day tomorrow. That's true. We had some plans to do things tonight that were in Princess Live but we thought you know what? Nah. That adult arcade Huh, we should have just gone to Princess Live, I tell you. Yo, our battery light is blinking, oh, so please hold. We're going to change the battery. Wait a second. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hello. Hey, y'all, fresh battery. We could talk for a year now. Let's not. Let's do <laughs> um, So, what was going on in Princess Live and stuff? Oh, so it was Marriage Match Game Show. That's right. And the Officer Karaoke, which is, I guess, something new or just exclusive to this ship that our cruise director came up with Officer Singing Karaoke. Ah, sounded really fun, but uh, no room. So, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about dinner. That's about all we have to yep. talk about. So, you started off with like a beef tartare preparation. Yeah, I'm. It was good. I'm not really a beef tartare person. I've learned. I like tuna tartare a lot. Mm. I think it's more mind over matter with this one for some it's reason. I was eating it. And I was like, do I like it? I mean, it tastes <sighs> good. Should I be eating this? I don't think I would get it again personally. So but that's just like a. a in my mind thing. Yeah. You're a poke or tuna yeah, tartare. Yeah, that I can handle. And that salmon. Is, eh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I had the chicken tikka, and it was really good. It was actually pretty spicy. Um, I liked it, though. Everything about it was good. It was cooked well, but hoo-hoo, that spice. <laughs> Bring it on, though. Then you had a kale Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. It was good. Had really nice uh, Caesar dressing. I did the kale version. They have a regular one as well, just because I felt like a little healthier. I don't know. <laughs> It was, yeah. it was tasty. It makes a little healthier. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, that's right. I only had one appetizer, so let's go ahead and jump to... Uh, let's jump to my corned beef. It was there. No, oh, it was no. okay. It was tough, I have to say. Uh -huh. Like, even cutting through it with a knife was tough. Chewing it was tough. And even, like, I take big bites. I need to learn to take smaller bites. Swallowing it was tough. So I would not get that again. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it was cool to see, like, some local flavor on the menu, yada, yada. But, um... It could have just been the preparation of it, too. It could, yeah. but um, no. You had chicken pot pie. Which was recommended by our lovely waiter, Juan Carlos, and I'm glad he recommended it. 
I've had chicken pot pie on other cruises and it's like soup with a biscuit on it. This was like mm. a traditional chicken pot pie. Delicious flaky crust, lots of robust vegetables and a creamy sauce. Would definitely get again. Nice. It's good. Um, yeah, my corned beef, by the way, was not recommended by the server. Um, <laughs> and speaking of, also, I had the Ruby Tooby Ding Dongs. I forgot what they were called. Did you see the caption when it came up? Because it was a funny name. <laughs> it was basically like, it was almost like either Bubble and Squeak, which I had the other day, which is like cabbage oniony stuff, with cheese and onions on top. Hmm. Or like a shepherd's pie without meat. Because there's potatoes. But you added cabbage. Yeah. I don't know. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> um, it was kind of like, yeah, potato, cabbage, oniony. I don't even know what was in it. You know what? It was just that magical. I'm going to call it the Rumpelstiltskin Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> what was the real name? Let's move on. I would eat that again, though. That was pretty good. I was trying to good. see what it's called. That's fine. That's For okay. dessert, you had a roly-poly. Warm roly-poly, <laughs> which is basically like a strawberry Swiss roll with a creme anglaise and strawberry sauce. And then he was like, do you want ice cream? And I was like, yes. So I had some ice cream on the side. Heck it was yeah. tasty. Yeah, I would definitely try that again. Uh, warm cake and really tasty sauce. I had the flourless chocolate cake, which was his recommendation. I didn't want to get it. I mean, I like a flourless cake. I was thinking like a melting cake. This was just like a block of fudge. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It was like dark-ish and fudge-ish, but I wasn't really in the mood for fudge, so it was okay. But I had chocolate ice cream with butterscotch sauce, Ooh. and that was the saving grace of the day. <laughs> I could have just got that and been happy. Yeah. That's it, y'all. Some hits and misses, obviously. Yeah. So we go on to bed. Watch Love Boat, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> see you there tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get up to quite a bit. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see you on the day. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>